Hey, everybody. I'm Baron Vaughn, host of Sci-Fi Wire's The Great Debate. I am very excited to talk to you about TZGZ, the twisted animated side of sci-fi that will tickle your eyeballs every Saturday night at midnight-ish. TZGZ is home to original late-night adult animated shows. In short, space buttholes. Put your fingers inside me and all shall be revealed. I'm here to introduce four new original shows. We'll be joined by panels made up of both new and established creators, along with some of the star power casts, including Doug Goldstein, Alan Tudyk, Asif Ali, Quinta Brunson, Reggie Watts, Anna Gasteyer, and more. To help us get where we're going, we're gonna need our own trans-dimensional tour guide and unofficial TZGZ mascot. Hi, Wizard. Hi, Wizard, you there? Hey, man, what is happening? You're gonna take us on a tour of TZGZ. Oh, yeah, let's go. To get there, it's crazy. You gotta know the secret password. But don't worry, I'll tell you. It's... Don't be alarmed. You are about to be transported to the outer limits of animation. Prepare for liftoff. Whoa, that was like a roller coaster. Only colors in my eyes instead of, you know, like wind in, in my hair. I'm just happy your beard didn't get caught in any gears. Hey, look, it's Devil May Care. Devil May Care is a new show from Doug Goldstein, who you know from Robot Chicken. In Devil May Care, the devil is rebranding hell and enlists the help of a newly dead guy millennial to manage social media. And here to tell us more is the aforementioned creator, Doug Goldstein, Alan Tudyk, who plays Devil, and Asif Ali, who plays our friendly neighborhood Millennial Beans. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Oh yeah, the show's great. I have a lot of questions, uh, but before we do that, let's take a quick look. So, let's see, my new assistant's name is Beans. Is that Welsh? I'm, I'm from New Jersey. Says you died when a bus fell on you. <laughs> Not ran over, fell on. What is that about? I have no idea. Better than choking on a Tide Pod, I guess. Do I really need an assistant? I made the bureaucracy to take these decisions off my plate. But still, huh. what to do, what to do? Circus peanut? Um, no, thank you. But hey, devil, if you don't want me, that's cool. You could, I don't know, send me to heaven instead? I get it. Hell's about suffering, right? Wrong! I got tired of the lava look, so we gentrified. Now hell's the address to impress. I want my citizens to be happy. All the coolest stuff ends up in hell, so why not enjoy it? Oh my god, are those zooms? You know it, baby. Now, what can you do to plus this place? No pressure. I don't think Gen Z has anything we need. I was a social media manager. We need that! Oh my, social media is exactly what hell's been missing! It is? I assumed you invented it. No, <laughs> no, humans and free will, right? Doug. First question's for you. Sure. What the hell did we just see? <laughs> well, did it? we just saw the scene where Beans, who's very surprised to find himself in hell, is being looked over and being wondered at why he should be given a job working for a devil directly. And Beans has no idea. And Devil has no idea. And we're going to see where that goes and see if it makes for a TV show. <laughs> yeah, and I was I was curious about that, like the bigger picture of Devil May Care, like how does that whole thing kind of fit together to you? Well, you know, there's two aspects of that. There's the question of why is Beans in hell uh, in the first place? Because he seems like such a nice guy. Um, and the answer to that is something I'm not even going to bring up. Um, because that is something <laughs> we will tease as the show unfolds, but I have an idea, and it'll be a huge surprise, and everyone's going to love it. It's going to be Emmys for everybody. <laughs> um, I'm clearing shelf space. Please. <laughs> um, yeah, and off that, I kind of was curious about like how you came up with this take for hell. Like it's more of like a sad land of rejects than a horrible, evil place. Like how did you kind of think to do it that way? Well, you know, I, I've always thought about the whole, if you're evil, you go to hell, and if you're good, you go to heaven. Seems really clear cut 
what if it's more like God is just like, ugh, all the stuff I don't like goes to hell, and all the stuff <laughs> I think is awesome goes to heaven? Mm. And, and if that were true, what is actually ending up in hell? Like, some of the Star Wars movies, but not all of them, probably, you know? <laughs> so this next question, speaking of Star Wars, is for Alan, because Alan uh, has a massive resume of voice acting credits, Star Wars Rogue One, uh, Zootopia, Aladdin, Rick and Morty, just to name a few. Right. So, Alan, of all the characters you've played, who do you think right. the devil would love to meet for a little one-on-one -on -one torture shine? Wow, who would devil want to meet of the characters I've voiced? Maybe Hey Hey from Moana. I don't know. He's a crazy <laughs> so Asif, your character Beans becomes mm. Devil's right hand man. What is it about Beans that makes him perfect for this job? And also, were you nervous preparing for this role? Uh, and I mean you, Asif, yeah. to prepare to become the Devil's right hand man. This character Beans is very much prepared because being a social media guy. Um, you're used to just being yelled at, being told what to do, given jobs that you cannot handle, being blamed for things. Huh. I think that if, if, I, if I died today and I went to, and I ended up in hell somehow, from what I've learned about Devil from the show, I think that I would be pretty solid. And I, I, think, we, I think we'd have a fun time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is a question for Alan, actually. The devil has a, a couple different looks. Usually looks a little like a, a goth CEO, but sometimes <laughs> he hulks out, becomes a little bit of a badass devil. So one, what's up with that? And two, <laughs> what parts of Alan Tudyk did you have to connect to to create this glorious duality? <laughs> Oh, I think we all have our own inner devil. Um, he's He is kind of like a goth CEO and then he's trying to get everybody on the same page and get everybody. He's, he's optimistic. He wants hell to be a better place. Come on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then the Hulk out is just, you know, when he, he gets frustrated. I think we all have that. We all have those moments, especially in the trying days that we're living in, that there are those <laughs> moments where uh, we can turn into... Uh, Big, veiny, massive uh, freaks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go into a, a lightning round. Throw out the first answers that come to your brain. You ready? Yeah. Okay, the closest thing to hell in real life is? Watching Game of Thrones season eight. <laughs> <laughs> you have the power to banish one idea, like a product or an app or a food, to hell for eternity. What is it? Pickles. Pickles? Pickles? Eight pickles. I would say um, uh, TikTok, the, the entire service. Okay, Alan? <laughs> SUVs. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. All SUVs. All I like, I like learning you think about it. Completely Ooh, unnecessary. Okay. You're signing your soul away to devil. What do you demand in return? Seven <laughs> seasons of this show. <laughs> Seven seasons of awesome. Do Douglas, what were you saying? He gets my soul. I want two souls. I want to come out ahead. <laughs> Two souls. Alan? Um, uh, peace on earth, baby. I said peace, peace on earth. <laughs> wow, what a sacrifice. Wow. Uh, actually, uh, hi, Wizard. Are you there? You've been pretty quiet. Do you have any, you have any questions? Yeah, my question? Okay, my, my question is this. Nachos. Oh, I can, I can jump right on top of that. Sound. Okay, nachos. Yeah. You gotta have them, and you have to put jalapenos on, on them. Otherwise, what what are you even doing? Mm, interesting. Okay. Does anybody else have a response to, <laughs> to that question? The answer is yes. <laughs> the question is nachos. The answer is yes. Okay. 100% of the time. Nachos! nachos! Woo! I love me some nachos. What? Sorry to interrupt you there, Baron. Can I call you Bear? Great. So listen, Care Bear. I just thought I'd pop in and add a bit more color for your audience. I'm not quite sure this Alan guy is selling hell the way it should be. Oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, oh. Uh, just a second there, Wash. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're going to get your turn. Jeez. Uh, while you're here, I am so sorry about Firefly being canceled. My bad. 
<laughs> I couldn't help myself. It was just too good. <laughs> Picture this, Comic-Con fans. Hell is all the things you love in one place. Animation, adult-themed humor, bizarre new worlds, ridiculous new characters that are ripe for cosplay. <clears throat> in case anyone here is into that sort of thing, no pressure. Anyway, we've got tasteful nudity and the food is to die for. I mean, if you weren't already dead, of course. <laughs> Yikes. I gotta go. I'm losing signal. The Wi-Fi is terrible in hell. Watch Devil May Care. Ha bye. That was very strange. That was very weird. He 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 had me at tasteful nudity. Uh, <laughs> Yes, um, and now I am actually recovered from that, so I'm going to move <laughs> on. Okay, the High Wizard has used some of his High Wizardry to deliver two of you mystery boxes with yes. special surprises inside. Okay, who has them? You have one, Asif? Okay, don't open them yet. Don't open them. Okay. Your job is to feel it and then let everyone know what you think it might be. There's feel definitely it. some sort of some sort of cup. It feels like a cup. Okay. Like a bowl or a cup. And then I have like a cloth thing, maybe like a scarf, mm, a okay. scarf or maybe like a nice hat. And then, wow, you're, all you're thinking about is domestic things. You're like, ooh, warmth and tea. Now you can reveal it if you wish. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Oh, this is. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a cup that says "Not wow. today, Satan." Mm. And inside of it is this our socks. Yeah. Oh, oh, Doug, I know what these are. They're, they're, um, they're devil horns. They're devil horns in them. I'm going to try putting That's them cool. on. That's <laughs> cool. I'm just happy that everyone Guys, got something that makes them feel really hot. This looks, Doug, we're like, yeah, we're it looks really good. For Halloween. Okay. Thank you, Devil May Care team. Hi, Wizard. Take us away. Stop yelling at me, man. Who are you, my cousin i don't think so oh you know what forget it come on man we got more places to visit tzgz remember yeah yeah i feel underappreciated it's not like this is easy <laughs> whoa i feel like a slinky but you know like fuzzier playing with a very different brand of slinky. Hey, it's wildlife, set in a post-apocalyptic world where animals are now the ruling class. They bonded together, just trying to live their lives with a sense of normalcy, but it's pretty much impossible in this upside down world. Here with us is creator and executive producer, Adam Davies, Claudia O'Doherty, who plays Marnie, a dolphin with a heart of gold who can't wait to kill her first human, and Reggie Watts, uh, this is going to go down in the annals of panels. Who plays Darby, a koala who can make or fix anything and is super into psychedelics. Welcome, everybody. Oh, and me, I'm also in the show. <laughs> I play Hudson, an overeager <laughs> fox who leaves a trail of destruction wherever he goes. I say destruction because it depends on who you asked. But before we get into this discussion, let's take a look at wildlife. Paul? Who's Paul? What? No, Viv, the mall. Ah, pass. Slurp the sun. If we don't fix the water, Marnie's gonna die. She's dying as we speak. Land money, f yeah. She sounds fine to me. Come on, Debbie. Can't you at least just keep an eye on Marnie? Oh. Ugh, I really wish I could, but I promise Billy, he and the boys could practice their nail technique on me. Sorry. Uh, what kind of friend are you, Debbie? I guess the kind of friend who supports Billy's professional dream of opening a first-class spa. I I'll go. I, I never get to go. Not now, Hudson. Come on, Bamboo. Do us a solid, and we'll get you something from the mall. Here's what you're going to get me. A Takaji X12 Home Muscle Orbital 360 non gravital Executive Massage Chair. In black. Uh, no. Fine. Get me some sunglasses. Make sure they're black. Okay, deal. Did you hear me? I can fight. Ugh. I can do it. Enough, Hudson. You know you're banned from the mall, and you know why. Rest in peace, Lionel. All right, come on, Vivs. We need your claws in case mall humans try to kill us. Plus, you need H2O just like the rest of us. Sorry, Darby, but I got all the H2O I need right here. 
plus H2X, yellow triple six, and something called Crackazine? Yeah, Crackazine! Dear God, what in the... Damn, girl. Uh, I'll go! I need more dynamite! Ah! 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 Well, Adam, uh, take us through what we just watched and, and where it fits into the broader story and world of Wild. Yeah, so basically that was um, part of our pilot, which is a unique... Um, clip to watch because it basically is trying to um, paint a picture of the whole world. However, most of the show is actually a hangout show um, and the flaming buildings in the background are more of a backdrop to kind of, um, you know, contrast this paradise that these animals are now living in. Oh, very, very, very nice. I like that. I love contrasting paradises. Uh, Claudia, what attracted you to this role and wildlife? Um, okay, it was funny and good, and I was absolutely available. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, you have a character called Darby, who is a toad-licking koala that drives a tricked-out golf cart. Um, how method did you have to go to portray Darby? Um, the method was just wearing a lot of fur costumes and um hanging off of uh, trees and stuff like that and and eating weird things that i find on the ground and then just practicing driving uh different models of golf carts because i didn't know which one they were going to use for the show so claudia um marnie has a relentlessly yeah. positive attitude even in very 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 bad situations yeah, I was just swimming around my tank, bored out of my skull, when the most amazing thing happened, the water turned to burning acid! Would you consider yourself a Marnie in real life? No. <laughs> um, but I would say that... <laughs> okay. I'll expand on that. I mean, she's pretty, um, she's pretty, um, insanely optimistic, because I guess She's a dolphin, so they have a higher energy level than a human anyway. I appreciate yeah. that. So, Reggie, Darby seems to, well, he seems to love killing humans. Do you think that's more about revenge or survival? You know, I, I, think, it's, I think it's more about survival. Yeah, I think he's, he's pretty uh, happy-go-lucky about things um he's also a little bit of a pragmatist which helps him be so kind of at ease and then the psychedelics kind of allows him to understand the interconnectedness of all life so i don't think there's any animosity necessarily i just yeah. think it's just the situation and uh and so the short long answer is survival okay thank you very much you're welcome um, so Hi, Wizard, do you have any questions about the show? About the show, though. Yeah, so if, like, the show is about wildlife, then could the wild be making a show about our life? Whoa. <laughs> Jungles. So no questions? Uh, not at this time. No. Oof. Okay, now we're going to play Feral Faces. Do your best animal impression, and everyone has to guess what it is. You do not have a choice in this. Okay, Claudia, Adam, you start us out. <laughs> oh, that's so easy. Moose. Um, oh, it's visual. Okay. Yeah. Moose. Is that a moose? Yeah. It, no, it, can be it. it can be It could be audio. It could be all of the above. Right. Claudia. Okay, great. Okay. okay. That's a real, that's actually a very good impression of my parents' cat. Oh, am I not going to reveal it? Hello. <laughs> what is this supposed to be? We have to throw that answer out. <laughs> I still think um, you should use this because it's a very good impression. Reggie. Sorry, I got too excited. Um, okay, here we go. This is if the animal were a human, right? Hey, what are you guys doing? Uh, dog? Any dog. Any yeah. dog. <laughs> 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 okay, and now, uh, and now my turn. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> oh. 
Oh, oh, a goose, oh, a horn, a goose, a, horn. Um, a, a honking goose. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I was just doing an impersonation of my grandmother when I would call her grandma. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. love feral faces. Thank you, everyone. Hi, wizard. Um, what do you say? It's not just what I say. It's what I physically communicate with my... Whoa, I think I just saw myself in the future, only it was the past and I was in the present. Like this present. <laughs> oh, I like DeLoreans. <laughs> oh, I couldn't be more confused as to what is happening right now. Hey, it's Magical Girl Friendship Squad! Where two directionless 20-something women suddenly find themselves with super magical powers and are charged with saving the universe. Joining us today is creator and showrunner Kelsey Stefanidis. Anna Akana, who plays Daisy, Quinta Brunson, who plays Alex, and Anna Gasteyer, who play, who gets to play, well, all-powerful godlike red panda named Nut. Welcome, everyone. Hi, thanks Hello. for having us. Happy to have you. Now, before we get to jabbering about the show, let's take a look. So I suppose you don't want to hear about the special powers I can grant you. Powers? Yeah! Oh, what kind of powers? Can we wish for a million dollars? No. Oh. What's your name, creepy panda? I have chosen the Earth name Isis, after the ancient Earth goddess. Ooh, do not love that. Name's no good anymore. Fine. You may call me by my native name. Nut, mother of Isis. Nope, no Isis. Forget about Isis. Now, each of you must choose the object that will activate your powers. You must carry this object with you at all times. Fine. I'll pick my birth control. It'll remind me to take it. Obviously choosing bong sell it. Not practical. You, Alex and Daisy, are my fated guardians. It is now your duty to protect the entire universe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't say anything about duty. <laughs> duty. We can't protect the universe. We can barely take care of ourselves. I used a W-2 as a pad last week. But you are warriors. You said you killed three men with a pencil. What? But can't you get someone else to do it? Or, like, do it yourself? You're a god who can give PowerPoints out of your butt, so should be pretty easy for you. In your world, I am merely a helpless red panda with limited access to my own powers. This is your destiny and yours alone. And if you don't fulfill that destiny, then your universe and everything in it, everyone you have ever loved, will die. Is that it? <laughs> Did you think that was news? <laughs> that it's like definitely happening anyway. Does she not know about climate change? <sighs> Let's just call animal control from the coffee shop. Okay, so Kelsey, um, first question is for you. Where did Daisy and Alex come from in your life? Are they real people, amalgamations? So I think Daisy in particular is definitely an amalgamation of a lot of my friends, both in like personality and in almost also even the way she looks. So I think a lot of that was probably influenced by the dynamic I have with a lot of my friends in a lot of my life and just kind of that friendship, really close friendship dynamic where you're very two very different people, but you really perfectly kind of fit together and complement each other. Mm, puzzle pieces that puzzle each other. I like that. Okay, so this question is for uh, Anna Akana. Anna, if there happens to be a day where the world isn't in peril and her rent is paid, how do you think Daisy would misuse them powers? Um, I don't know if she would misuse her powers. I think she would just get incredibly high with Bong Silic <laughs> and binge TV. <laughs> okay. So Quinta, you're you're new to the the role of Alex. Um, what was it about this insanely twisted show that caught your attention? What I loved about it, as someone who's also making television, is that. Kelsey successfully got a superhero story with two um, kick-ass girls <laughs> as the leads on the screen. Um, I thought it was incredible. I was like, how could I not sign up for this? It's really the kind of stuff I want to watch. And it was kind of positioned as a mix of like Sailor Moon and Broad City. What could be <laughs> better? I just yeah. thought it was just fantastic. I feel so proud that I get to be a part of it. 
because I had no idea what I was in for. And it's just fantastic. It's everything that I imagined and more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also excited. Okay, Anna Gastar, your resume jam-packed with memorable roles. But let us address Red Panda. Yes. <laughs> you want to sign up for Magical Girl Friendship Squad. Was it the magical butthole? Listen, anytime there's a magical butthole, it's going to be an extra perk. Being able to say the word butthole in a peaceful and universal way, in such a um, consistent way, is going to be an attractive, um, uh, shiny finish. But uh, I have to agree with Quinta that I, I really was really, really excited by um, the idea of this being a female-driven story and that it was... Um, and not just like uh, unicorns and rainbows. I sort of love the irony of the title alone, but that the girls are just incredibly authentic and down to earth mm -hmm. and um, conflicted and human. You know, I have a daughter who reads Giant Days and I have a son who watches, you know, a lot of male anime, so anime. So um, he's more of like a Naruto kid. So it was more just like, what can I find that lives right down the middle? Um, of the quest orientation and and really cool, funny storytelling at the same time. Oh, that's fantastic. And let's go back to, to Kelsey, actually, on that, because this show, actually, it parodies a lot of different genres and tropes in animation, uh, especially the um, the fight sequences, very anime-inspired. But it, it, there's, a, there's obviously an affection for those tropes. Can you talk about towing the line between parody and sincerity. You know, we're big fans of the magical girl genre and anime in general, and we never want to like throw out the idea that we're making fun of it. What I really think it is, we're kind of taking the magical girl genre story and parodying it by modernizing it, setting it in modern day New York. But then I think we also use like the magical girl genre to parody like real life in that it is so, it's such like an optimistic genre about like usually a bunch of girls saving the world and kind of taking that idea and then like pushing it on to, to very like cynical millennial Brooklyn based women <laughs> kind of really kind of creates like part parody, part tribute, really. Mm. Ooh, I love that. Part parody, part tribute. Um, this is a question for Anna Akana. Um, what does it mean to you to live inside of that that kind of circle of part parody, part tribute? Um, I really love it. So I, I spent a lot of my formidable years in Japan and I, I grew up on anime and manga and reading Japanese storytelling. And when I was approached with this show and told it was anime inspired, in reading it, I could see a lot of the tributes. Um, and I also had such a gripe with Sailor Moon as a kid where I was like, they <laughs> so long to get changed. The world is gone already. And their outfits are not tactical for fighting. And I love that joke. I actually just got to see the pilot yesterday and I was crying laughing. So I was like, yes, there's not enough female adult animation that pokes fun at the over-sexualization of female fighters and their ridiculous skimpy outfits. Nope, no way, definitely not. We look like we're playing figure skaters in a porno. Who designed these? I thought they were quite stylish. Okay, um, I wanted to ask uh, Anna Gasteyer another thing. So, Nut chooses two pretty unlikely candidates to act as her actors, um, yeah. and Daisy and, and Alex. So let's say that you really are a world-creating, shape-shifting goddess. Who are you enlisting as your protectors in your real life? Honestly, even in the last three weeks, just watching youth culture and continue to 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 push um to push dialogue and language and 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 um conversation because i do think that there is an optimism and a ruthlessness both i think there's a demand i mean look i have an 18 year old so like i've learned just even in the last two weeks to change the way i think about so many things and um this has been such a weird and challenging year i think for everybody um and it's you know challenging couple of years, <laughs> four years. Um, so it, I, I think I would, I would pick badass young people. They're, they're, they're making us talk about everything we need to talk about. Sorry to be earnest. Sorry to go all old lady earnest on you. Oh, that's fantastic. No, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being earnest. Um, you know, <laughs> go, go wild. It's important to me. Yes. All right, high wizard question time. 
Do I even bother? Hi, wizard. Hello. <coughs> Oh, that's the good stuff. I really hope the High Wizard is wearing a mask. Uh, okay, so we are going to uh, switch gears right quick, and we're going to do something called the Totem Hunt game. I want each of you to choose a nearby object, any object, as your personal talisman. Go find an object. I know. I love... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh, that's an oatmeal cookie as of this morning. Okay, well, I'm glad that you named it, but that's actually the first part of this game. No matter what it actually is, I would like you to give it a magical name and for you to tell us what it does when it is activated, okay? And then maybe mm -hmm. give it like a, a catchphrase that you get to shout, when, you know, to make it happen, to make the magic start. Think on it. Not too much. Here we go. Kelsey? It's a tin of candy, hard, unnamed candy. Yes, unnamed candy, I love yes. that. That, that. That's my favorite kind. <laughs> okay, uh, next let's go to uh, Anna. Okay, yeah. so this is uh, Okie Dokie. Um, <laughs> and uh, it manipulates you with sweetness to get your attention and it gets you nice and calm. And then it really packs in a healthy dose of fiber. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then do you have some kind of incantation you have to say to activate it? Okie dokie, okie dokie. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. <laughs> Anna Akana. This is the dismantler, and uh, I can point it at anything, like the government, and I just yell, dismantle, and then it all falls apart and begins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and lastly, but not leastly, Quinta Brunson. Uh, I'm struggling. This is called the Energizer. It's a <laughs> bottle of vitamin C. <laughs> I would throw it and say, immuno uncompromised, so it can help you boost your immune system when you need it um, in the middle of a fight. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, I'll get extra life in the middle of yeah, a fight. Yeah, extra life in the middle of a fight, exactly. And it, it's time release, so you can take it and it releases as you fight, so. I already like this, this team, this team's ability. <laughs> And called optimistic and ruthless. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. Now we're going to, you might have all had something maybe, I don't know, magically delivered to you. Now collect it, but don't take it out yet. So Anna and Quinta, can you reach into your boxes? I've been afraid of this since they said this was coming. I don't like reaching into things. It's furry. <laughs> this is like a, like a toy monkey. With is it pack. furry? Yeah. Is it nut? 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 Take it out? Yeah, you should take it out now. <gasps> it is nut! It's nut! Oh, 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 that is really that's cute. That's adorable. That's Check adorable. Out. How's the bee hole? <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. It's not there. It's oh. not there. In a it's it's for the does. best from a lawsuit standpoint. Yeah, I think. Look what it does. <laughs> so cute. Hi, wizard. Are you there? How, how are you feeling? What? Oh, I feel like something's missing. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Found it. <laughs> I, I can't taste my soul, man. I can't taste it. We're too deep. We're way too deep. I swear that's like a, a, a lyric from a Sting song. This is Helden! Where we've got a group of monsters and misfits weathering the uber apocalypse by watching twisted old cartoons that the cast riff over. That group of monsters and misfits is actually the legendary comedy troupe Dr. God, which is made up of Sean Cowhig, Neil Gargiulo, Brian James O'Connell, David Park, and Justin Ware. From that group, we've got Emmy-winning Neil Gargiulo and Justin Ware, and we've got Zabeth Russell. Hi. A collaborator and actor extraordinaire. Hello, everyone. How you doing? Great. Good. Great. <laughs> all right. I'm, 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 now that we're all boxed in, uh, before we get to the discussion, let us take a little look at Heldon before we dive into the nitty and also the gritty. 
Hey, everyone, check it out. It's my sister, Stephanie. Oh, man, I'm so excited you're not dead. Yes, brother, it is I, your living sister, Stephanie, born of Earth and free from Hell's chains. <laughs> Together, we will capture the souls of our enemies, shower in their blood, and cargo their entrails! Also, I enjoy hopscotch and cream dice. I'm pretty sure your sister's possessed by a demon. <coughs> Nuh-uh, she's just sick, right? That is right, my human brother. I am sick. Sick with contempt for those who refuse to lick the stone before the great Sasnar! <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> I mean, Stephanie. <coughs> Good enough for me. Let's watch some TV. Welcome everyone to America's favorite game show, Find That Nipple! Ooh, just a bit outside. He was so close, but he stumbled with a literal nip slip. Let's see how our next contestant does. Like neon paint at Burning Man, he found that nipple! Let's see how our next contestant does. Not even close, and you can really see the disappointment on Herb's face. Bummer, buddy. Our final contestant is up, and we have a grand champion! Some naysayer said this pepperoni nip could not be covered. Tune in next week where we play a special third nipple edition. Is it on the back? Is it on the neck? We'll find out then. Toodaloo! First, <laughs> let me ask a question. Um, Neil. Neil, take us through what we just watched and where it fits into the broader concept of Hell Den. Okay, so what you just watched was the updated look for season two. Because we're working with TZ Jeezy now, we've been able to enhance the animation. We've got great guest stars this season. Um, and, you know, more so we got to look at, this is a sketch comedy show, and we, in season one, only really lampooned old animation. But for season two, we're using old animation, but we're using old films, we're using home videos from the 1930s. We're using PSAs and educational films. The one thing that is staying the same is we are using gratuitous amounts of blood again. <laughs> Off that point that this is season two of Held In, where it is now a TZGZ original, um, Justin, can you talk about what that means for the show? Well, being on TZGZ, I think we're, we're about 40% classier. Recently developed pervert analysis has shocked the scientific community with this new information. No, it's uh, it, the exact same lack of class show that it was before, except bigger and faster and funnier. We know the characters better. We expand the world. We actually get off the sofa, go down into the basement. We have some new characters. Uh, play a little bit with a more you know social commentary. Play a little edgier, a little more timely. Uh, we, we definitely didn't know that doing a show about people uh, trying to entertain themselves during the apocalypse would end up being quite so <laughs> relevant. Questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, we really were able to wade through even more content. We got more good writers, you know, on the show this season, and uh, we've been able to, I think, you know, get, get our sea legs in season one, but this season really uh, hit the gas. Helden is, it's not so much a... A, a narrative comedy series, if we've, as we've talked about, but it's more of a experimental sketch show, you could say. I wanted to ask you all, what are some of the, uh, the influences of this show and in some of the influences that you personally might be bringing into your uh, part on this show? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll jump in there first. I think that the, you know, we, we do consider ourselves sort of students of comedy, so we watch a lot of different stuff. And, and we've always been, I think, a fan of, some of the shows, uh, even going back to like Monty Python and stuff, where they didn't have a, a straight structure. And then, of course, you know, other shows that are hosted like Mystery Science Theater. But also, I think, you know, we're just very omnivorous in our uh, content that we just devour. And we love old, weird stuff. I mean, we all watch a lot of B-movies. And, you know, we're working with Shout Factory, who does, as you know, Mystery Science Theater 3000. And... Um, you know, it's been a really great opportunity to work with people who have kind of done something that is adjacent to this show, certainly a different approach towards the material, um, has really helped us in diving in, finding the stuff that we're looking for. Um, and, you know, in terms of influences beyond just the writing, 
Ren mm -hmm. and Stimpy is kind of a great example mm -hmm. of an influence for me. When I look at the music that we're using in this show, Ren and Stimpy, the music was so important to create the aesthetic of the show. And when we go into post on this, we're working with Gregory James Jenkins, who uh, is an unbelievable composer who we've worked with a bunch, just won an Emmy together recently. And he's creating so many original songs with us um, that we're creating not just a vibe for the comedy, but also a vibe for, you know, the aesthetic. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Zabeth? Yeah, for me, um, as an actor who plays a bunch of different roles on the show, I love the idea of getting to play any and every different type of character, but you're not really limited by being filmed. So I can be like a mean couch, or I can be like a, a very sexual cow. Um, like, <laughs> I, but uh, it's it's really nice to be able to like be truly unlimited in uh, in what you're doing. And so I, I love... Uh, I think we're so influenced by sketch comedy and things like that, but also bringing in that animation mentality of like really the sky's the limit has been like a real pleasure. Uh, hi, Wizard. Are you asking a question? I think you're on mute. Can you unmute yourself? So that's why I think all birds are really fairies in disguise. I've never wanted to hear the first part of a sentence more in my entire life. Okay. Hey, uh, sorry, I got an invite to this. Do I know you people? You guys seem vaguely familiar. Uh, yes, we're talking about Helden, which is a show which you are on. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, what's up? <laughs> you know, we're really excited that you made it. No, it's, it's all good. I just thought this was an aerobics thing. I got put on a wait list. I thought this was that. But I'm good. Well, okay, but feel free to stick around. So, Neil, I, I was going to ask you if... Um, hey, is there any way we could get our heart rates up in this? Just because, you know, I have two hearts. I'm sorry, not, not really. It's not Zumba, it's just Zoom, bruh. Oh. Wow. That's... You can mute. You can, you can mute. That was on mute. Okay. All right. You know what? Why don't you just go? You can just go, Foot. Fine. Good luck finding another talking foot. Whew. That toe really knows how to jam. Now we're going to play a game called What a Hell. I'm going to share an extreme close-up image of a clip from Helden, right? And then you all have to guess what a hell we're looking at. Okay, here we go. All right. First, you're looking at the uh, the image. Mm -hmm. What the hell is that? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to say that this is um it's a piece of cheese next <laughs> to a fox. A piece of cheese next to a fox? Yeah, a fox, the animal? Oh. I'm going to say uh I was going to say something very similar that that is the ears of uh Neil's favorite new character uh Randy the werewolf. <laughs> wow. Okay, Neil. I believe that is the piece of cheese that is coming out of the ear of Randy the werewolf. I'm almost positive. So, it's kind of a combination of what we just said. Yeah, no, I mean, we all we're, nailed it, clearly. We're definitely right. <laughs> I guess, let's see what the full image is. You think this is a f joke, Brayden? Well, it's not. This is my life. You will never, ever find someone as good as me again. And you didn't even deserve me. I want you to know that. And you know what else, Brayden? I want you to see this I want you to see this as it walks out of your life. The dulcet sounds of Brian James O'Connell. Yes, well, it certainly is. That is the most excited I have ever seen Brian James O'Connell ever get into a booth to do that, as if he's been holding on to something his entire life. Mm. And he really, that was his, like, I think he wrote that for someone named Brayden in his childhood. Oh, that wrote it. I think it just came out of his soul fully formed. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, here's another still. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Any guesses? I have one. Um, it looks like the eye of a fox who's about to eat a piece of cheese. Mm. Okay. Eye of a fox that's about to eat a, eat a piece of cheese. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That 
to me is we are we are looking down on a toilet seat cover uh, that leads into the underworld. Ooh, Neil. I think I know what it is. I think it is a donut that someone is dunking into a cup of coffee before they eat it, and then a bunch of children come out of that person's coat, and they also eat the donuts. Wow, okay. Um, I, I think you might be right, Neil. Okay, let's, let's play the clip. All right, we did it. We, we, we figured out what the hell those things were. Neil, that was good. I'm impressed. That was really good, Neil. Well, I am, uh, I ate no donuts. That's one of my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we have one last thing to do, and that is the magical mystery box gifted to you from the high wizard. Okay, now reach inside, feel, touch, sense, taste, remember, and tell me what you think it is. Oh, oh. Okay, there's definitely a foot in here. Definitely um, a foot. Two of them. There's a couple more things, and I think one is a fox, and the other one is a piece of cheese. <laughs> I There's a, a, a keychain. Perhaps you should pull it out and see what it is, guys. What's what's inside that box? It's a foot. It's a foot. It's a foot. It's a foot. <laughs> And it's the TV. Oh, the TV. Aww. Oh, very nice. <laughs> oh my God. I love that there are two feet so we can Ooh, it do. Works, kind of. Oh, what's, what's going on there, Neil? Uh, honestly, I'm just a little emotionally moved by this. This is really <laughs> sweet. And I got, a lot to, I got a lot going on on the inside, Baron. Yes. And this is helping bring it out. This is nice. I, <laughs> Neil is really the biggest crier of the whole group. I can see that. Uh, well, I'm so glad that these these gifts brought a tear to your eye and, and luckily not the smell of the feet in themselves. Feet are a metaphor for like solid ground, like earth ground, earth reality. Oh man, I'm freaking out, dude. We gotta go. Looks like we gotta go, gang. We gotta go. Oh, my goodness. Hi, wizard. Oh, thank you for being our guide. No problem, man. It has been my so distinct pleasures. Keep in mind, re-entry into Earth is like bumps and waves, and, and you got to keep your hands inside the rainbow ride at all times, you know? No, but whatever works. So thank you again to all of our guests, and thank you to everyone out there who tagged along. Please be sure to check out TZGZ on Sci-Fi Saturdays at midnight-ish. Remember, Devil May Care, Wildlife, Magical Girl Friendship Squad, and Hell Den will be out soon, but we got plenty of great stuff out there already, so please make sure to check out TZGZ. You're gonna have a great time, I guarantee it, because I'm Baron Vaughn, and my face has never been on any money. Okay, bye guys.